All right, guess what? Trade tariffs are not the end of the world or the economy, as some would have you believe. They are an important negotiating tactic for an America first economy, all right, in America's own interest. And guess what else? Donald Trump may actually be a free trader. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Ha, ha, ha. Let's talk about it with Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty, former U.S. ambassador to Japan and a member of our China trade group under Mr. Trump, and John Carney, Breitbart economics editor and co-author of the Breitbart Business Digest. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Um, John Carney, I'm going to start with you. Just because you wrote this great piece March 28th, a couple days ago, we talked about it on the radio, Tariff Mageddon is back. Yeah, all these... Mostly people on the left, although some on the right that you could have cited, but you did not. That tariffs are the end of the world. They cause inflation. They cause consumer declines. They destroy the economy. So, um, Mr. Trump using tariffs uh, as an important negotiating tool against China. Um, I'm a free trader, but I completely supported the China tariff effort because we had work to do with their unfair practices. They were, you know, stealing intellectual property forcing uh, technology transfers. Anyway, the end of the economic world did not come. It did not come. Now, I don't know whether, the, you know, we succeeded with China to the extent we wanted to, but there was, inflation was tiny rock bottom. Let's start there. Right. There was, they said right from the beginning, they said, this is going to cause inflation. It will drive up the price of cars. It'll drive up the price of television. That didn't happen at all. We had almost no inflation throughout the Trump years. In particular, we had no inflation on the very things that tariffs were placed on. Mm. So this idea that, you know, consumers are going to pay more, they're bringing that back again. They, they, their old record didn't work the first time. Mm. They're going to try it again. It's not going to work again. I think one of the most important things uh, President Trump used to say a lot was the word reciprocity. Yes, there you he go. He said, I That's like the, the word the reciprocity. Bingo. Right. If you are fair with us, we'll be fair with you. But when you put up trade barriers from the United States, then we are going to put them up against you. You have to do that. If you play the sucker at the card table, everybody's going to cheat you. That's the role that the United States has been put in. Donald Trump started to change that, and hopefully he's going to get a chance to change it again. Senator Haggerty, you were an uh, integral part of that China trade team uh, in Washington and Beijing, and, of course, your own satrapy in uh, in um, Tokyo. But you've heard Trump talk about its reciprocity. Absolutely. That is the key. And it solves so many problems. I mean, think about people complaining about the Chinese buying land here in America. Would we be able to do that in China? Right. Reciprocity would solve that problem. If you think about it, we have the largest economy in the world. We also have the lowest trade weighted tariff barriers. Right. We should be using our economy as a tool of leverage. We should be seeking reciprocity at every turn, and we don't have it. You can go all the way back to World War II and think about some of the advantageous trade terms that we put in place following that war. We should have capped it in terms of time or you know, GDP per capita or by some measure. But we're in a situation today where many, company, many countries, I should say, have a much more advantageous trade set of tariffs than we do. Well, we gave China, when China entered the World Trade Organization, the WTO, in the year 2000, mm -hmm. we gave them a license to cheat and steal. Absolutely. Right? Because as a so-called undeveloped economy, which, what are they, the second largest economy in the world? Anyhow, they were allowed to have higher tariffs more non-tariff barriers, and nobody could do anything about it. There was no adjudication in the WTO because that's the way the damn thing was set up. Yes. The United States and other Western countries signed on to that. Trump said no. He said no. Now, the point is, reciprocity can work two ways, right? Let's assume, in the case of Japan, we had a small trade deal with Japan. Japan lowered some barriers, and we did too. Yep. So it can work that way. On the other hand... And some countries wouldn't want to name any names, but Germany, for example, has terrible trade barriers on automobiles. Terrible, right? So we should treat their cars the same way they treat our cars, with higher tariffs. I mean, that's reciprocity. What's wrong with that? Uh, nothing's wrong with it. And if you look at the differential in those, those tariffs, it's, it's enormous. Uh, you can sell a car from America to Germany, and, in, and you'll be encountering a 10% tariff. They can sell the car here. What is it, 2 2.5%? Two mm -hmm. uh, that's not reciprocal. That's exactly what President Trump was aiming at, is delivering reciprocal, fair terms. Every American can understand that, and I think our counterparty should understand that, too. John, you know what else? Uh, away from the trade game, 
Mr. Trump, who was quite a good negotiator, never gets credit for it from his critics. But, 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 go back to the open border debate with Mexico. Mexico right. would not help us, right, in 2018, 2019, until Trump basically said, okay, fine, you won't help us. I'm going to put 100% tariff on your manufacturers and your auto exports. That's right. The, and you... suddenly they saw the light. The Lord shined down on them. They put 25,000 troops at the border and ad adopted our remain in Mexico. Now, that was tariff negotiating. What was wrong with that? We've built the greatest economy in the world in the United States. We can use that power to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. We can say to whether it's our trade partners about their trade barriers, whether it's other countries about the, about policies that we have that we don't like. Like you were saying, the Mexico's attitude towards the migrants, we can say, look, we need your help on this. You want to sell things into the United States. We're going to charge you a cover charge, and that cover charge can be a tariff, or it can be you complying with the policy goals that we have in your neighborhood. When they won't do this, then we need to say, okay, look, this isn't a free ride. You don't get free access to the U.S. markets. That's exactly right. Um, I heard Trump say it many times. I wrote several op-ed pieces on the eve of the G7 and the G20, which the president saw and signed off on, where I said, basically, he is a free trader who wants to see a world of zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, and zero subsidies. That's his ideal vision of free trade. I still remember that, Larry. I'm telling you. zeros. I mean, I just love that. I wrote it up. He signed off on it. We all, I kind of drove Lighthizer a little bit crazy, but we love Lighthizer, <laughs> so that's a separate subject. But the point is, Trump would use tariffs in order to get to that world. And I think that's a good definition of free trade. And I also think this. We can't forget that we have a huge competitive advantage, and that's the size of our market. Right. And access to the, the, to the U.S. market is a great leverage point for us as well. Tariffs is a means of controlling that, but also just denying access. And tariffs is a means of achieving that. But if you think about the other tools, the other market access tools that other nations use with their regulatory construct, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, we need to be looking at reciprocity, again, to use the term that President Trump so aptly used. We need to be looking at reciprocity at every level. Man, I negotiated. I had the European side. What a mess. Even, even in what theory, a mess. Free just saying. <laughs> Do you think China was bad? John, I don't, I'm running out of time. Um, Jay Powell, yes. <laughs> our hero, spoke today. Uh, two things that came out of there. Why don't you just give us a snappy comment? Number one, I didn't hear anything new about lower interest rates. And number two, what I liked, he said this once before a few years ago, the job of the Fed is not climate change. That's right. All right. Now, do I have that right? No, that's he, right. He, he really put the foot down on this idea that the Federal Reserve should be a climate cop and start policing everybody about whether they're doing what the left wants them to do on climate change. He said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do it for a very good reason. One, it's not our job. And if it became our job, we would lose Fed independence mm -hmm. because we then become a political body. He doesn't want that to happen. So he is defending the Fed. He is defending, is defending their independence. And as you said, on interest rates, he said something very important that a lot went over a lot of people's head. He said that we need to see numbers that are better than what we had in January and February. Mm. So what he's communicating oh. is the numbers we've been having in don't mean that they're going to cut. So what you, that gives you a baseline. Unless the economy starts to sag, the Fed's not cutting. I'm telling you, you and I are keeping this option open. It's a non, what it's, Summers called it a non-zero probability that yes. the next move will be higher yeah, rate. Absolutely. <laughs> and Bill Harrity, just to finish this off, the, it, under these circumstances, with a durable economy, inflation above target, yes. if the Fed were to cut rates now, they would be accused of goosing the economy. Exactly. Like, it would uh, look Joe like Biden. partisanship to, to try to ensure that, that this current administration stays in power. I think it's a very precarious position to be in. They've got to remain data-driven, as they've said. Mm -hmm. And Chairman Powell needs to toe the line. And I think he's moving. The, he's, he, he held the line in his most recent conference. He's got to continue to do Sounds it. like he had a good day today. He did. It was a credit. very good day. Wow. Good. And Rafael Bostic said no cut till the fourth quarter. That means November, December. Oh, that after means the after election. the election, yeah. yes. Uh, Waller's in that camp, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good, John. Senator Haggerty, it's a pleasure. Great to be with John you. John Carney, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank